In part three of our look at population geography, we're going to focus on population pyramids. Now please keep in mind that you should be building on concepts that we've already discussed thus far, that each of these segments don't exist in isolation. The information that we're going to talk about in the population pyramids was information that was presented in parts one and two, and now put together in a different visual format. So you should be able to put the population pyramid into the different stage of the demographic transition model. So as we go through these different pyramids, we'll look at how the shape of the pyramid reflects the crude birth rate, the crude death rate, and the total fertility rate. We'll look to see how tall these go. So the higher the pyramid, the longer the life expectancy. And the shape of the population pyramid is telling. This is the world's population pyramid. And it is a pyramid with um, that's relatively cylindrical, but there's still a broader base, which means we are still growing our population. This would be a slow growth um, population pyramid. We're suggesting that whatever society is reflected in this pyramid would be growing slowly. A rapidly growing society would have a triangle with a very broad base and narrow top. And then a country that's experiencing population decline will actually see a tapering off at the bottom and at the top, so that the, the youngest cohorts, um, the percentage of the population in those youngest cohorts is actually smaller than what's in the middle. So each of these different levels ref reflects a cohort, an age group that um, is made up of five years, and then on the left we have men, and on the right we have women. The pyramids tell us a lot about what's going on in that society, again building off information that we've discussed already in the demographic transition model. Stage two is Molly, and on your worksheet, Molly is on the bottom right hand side. Molly is indicative of rapidly growing countries. Um, these countries are often developing economically as well as experiencing this rapid population boom. A couple factors that we've talked about is that with the increase um, access to medicine, increased knowledge, increased health care, we're seeing the, the crude death rate drop and also um, important is the, the drop in infant mortality. So it no longer requires a family to have eight or nine kids in order for five or six of them to survive. Uh, what we're seeing now is that these norms, these traditions of having many children is also corresponding to a lot of these children's living beyond the first year of their life. We're seeing that um, as the economies develop, this is still um, indicative of an agriculture-based economy. So the economy, as it moves towards industry, we'll see a tapering off at the bottom here as children become less of assets and more of financial liabilities. When we see a pyramid like this, it reflects what's called demographic momentum. So even if the total fertility rate shifts to replacement, 2.1, 2.0, even 1.9, which would be below replacement level. This population is going to grow for the foreseeable future because as each one of these large cohorts at the bottom of the pyramid replaces itself, this pyramid is going to, this base is going to remain very wide. So as these young cohorts age, we're going to see the size of this pyramid expand. So the overall numbers will continue to grow. And as we could see, the population today versus the population at the end of the century suggests that Mali is going to grow about 500% um, over the next 80 years. So today we're at just under 20,000, and by the end of the century we're going to be at almost 100,000. Again, we expect the fertility rate to drop um, in the coming years, in the coming decades, but because the base is so large, even if these kids today have fewer than six kids when they're older, if they simply double, this population is still going to grow rapidly. Mexico is our stage three model. And on the top right of the, the worksheet, you'll see Mexico. Um, again, Mexico is in stage three. And as you can see, Mexico is experiencing what's called the demographic dividend, where the bulk of its population is of working age. There aren't a lot of elderly, there aren't a lot of retirees in Mexico, 
over the age of 65. So Mexico today, as it, as it opens its economy, as it looks to reduce crime, increase international connections, is growing its economy rapidly. As Mexico evolves economically, we're also seeing the status of women um, improve in Mexico, where more women are entering the workforce, more women are um, able to access educational opportunities. And you'll recall, uh, inclusion in the workforce and increased educational opportunities in, um, puts off having children. So instead of having kids at 16, 17, 18, 20, people are now having kids late 20s, early 30s, sometimes into their 40s. So the fertility rate in stage three rapidly decreases because of contraception, because of access to education, because of workforce inclusion. And again, the economy has shifted from agriculture and rural to urban and industrial. Stage four is the United States of America, and the USA is not one of your pyramids listed, but you'll recall some of the reasons why we have this cylindrical shape. The cylindrical shape that shows stability. We're not growing. Um, again, if the United States did not um, have a net positive immigration number, then we would taper off and our population would not grow. But many of our immigrants are coming in and they're supporting this area. They're supporting our workforce and they're also supporting our youngest cohorts. Immigrants, few are moving in into this area where they would be an old age dependent. So while we're growing our um, population, we're not so doing so through total fertility because the U.S. total fertility rate is significantly below 2.0, below that replacement level. And again, children are a financial liability. Kids are expensive in a society like this with a high standard of living. Uh, many of our households today are dual income households. The majority of our workforce today consists of women. So as women move into education, move into the workforce, have access to contraception, move towards gender equality, we're seeing fewer kids, we're seeing a slowdown in our population growth. Also in stage four is China. And you might be asking yourself, what the heck is this? China has a population pyramid that results from its one child policy. So from 1979, to 2016, China allowed each married couple to have one child as a way to stem a population explosion. China um, in the 1970s was very concerned about a food shortage. They were very concerned about economic despair. So they put in place this one child policy. Now, mathematically, it worked. It, it's believed that the policy reduced the overall population by about 300 million. So instead of 1.4 million, we'd be up to 1.7, 1.75 million today. Um, what it's created that was unplanned are dependency issues. So as China restricted the number of children born, the population aged in place and the younger cohorts grew smaller and smaller. So as these cohorts age, they're going to require those social benefits, the security that is paid by the working group. You'll notice how this kind of opens up again. Um, China is looking to, re, to kind of reignite its population growth by allowing um, couples to request a permit to have a second child. Now, this works well in China because China is a communist country and they can restrict um, working opportunities. They can restrict different opportunities for families. So while a policy like this would be very difficult in other countries facing population growth, the Communist Party in China has really a tight grip on work, on education, on all aspects of life. So if you do have multiple children, then there could be um, economic uh, um, ramifications. Um, a downside to this is that we've also seen an increased level of female infanticide, where people who find out they're having a female uh, baby will decide to have an abortion and try again for a male. So you'll notice here that a lot of our youngest kids are disproportionately male than, than female. Stage, another stage four is the top left, and that's Portugal. Portugal is experiencing population decline. Um, it is an older population. Uh, life expectancy is high, but the population is old. It has a very low fertility rate, so we see very few um, 
of Portugal Portuguese uh, residents coming in at the, the the lower cohorts, and we're expecting a significant decline this century. So while they have over 10 million today, by the end of the century, we're expecting about 25% fewer people living in Portugal. Because as these cohorts age out and pass away, these cohorts coming in behind are significantly smaller. So Portugal is, is definitely a growing population, and it's facing demographic collapse. It won't be able to support its oldest population, and the, com the country itself, in terms of population, is expected to shrink considerably this century. Portugal has recently tried to promote immigration um, as part of the EU. They're in a better position to um, start up different types of economic specialization, economic clusters. Um, so far, Portugal has not been very successful at bringing more people in. So the United States would look similar to Portugal, if not for immigration. A couple outliers um, to the population pyramid on page two, the top left, this is Qatar in 1950, only about 25,000 people. Qatar was a, a pretty much a backwater. It was a, it was a, an entrepot or a trade post, an oyster um, trader destination in the 1900s. But in the second half of the 1900s, they discovered oil. And as a result, there was an increased demand that could not be met by 25,000 um, people living in, in Qatar. So Qatar today has this incredibly odd shape as men coming from primarily uh, South Asia move into Qatar to work in the national natural gas and oil fields. So today Qatar has this really massive demographic dividend because the the vast majority of the population is of working age and they are actually working because they moved into that area to um, support the natural resource um, extraction. So Qatar really is one of the more unique population pyramids that you'll find and it's a bit of an outlier. Um, if we had to put it in, uh, we would most likely put it in the end of stage three, beginning of stage four, because many of these um, immigrant workers will eventually move back to, um, to their uh, land of origin. Another outlier is the, the Russian Federation. And you can see here the disproportionate number of women as opposed to men. And what happened, and you, you could tell what happened about 25, 30 years ago, the Soviet Union collapsed, and it led to a contraction of births. And during times of economic uncertainty, and in this example, times of economic collapse, the fertility rate dropped significantly. So you can see over this decade, between the end of the Soviet Union and 10 years later, the fertility rate was cut almost in half. And again, half of the replacement level. In 2019, there was a bit of a rebound as Russia has undertaken some some policies to promote growing families, different types of tax benefits, different types of subsidies to improve um, their their future outlook. Russia is expected to drop its population considerably from where it is today, but the decline doesn't look to be as bad as it did um, 20 years ago. You'll also notice there's not a lot of men in the older cohorts, and uh, the fallout of the Soviet Union saw an increase in depression, a uh, tremendous increase in alcoholism that led to the early death of many men, so our women are found at a much higher percentage at these older cohorts. And our final outlier is Botswana. In 1990, Botswana had a late stage 2, early stage 3 pyramid, broad base, growing pretty fast, transitioning from agriculture to early industry. Ten years later, we see an odd shape here. We see that it's almost constricted where people weren't making it out of their early um, adulthood. And today we see uh, a bit of an odd shape. And this is the result of HIV AIDS. So Botswana in the early um, 2000s, or late 1900s, early 2000s, was experiencing a, a tremendous um, negative effect from the HIV and AIDS epidemic, where it was cutting people off in their prime. So while the pyramid was continuing to push people into adulthood, 
many of those adults were contracting HIV-AIDS and passing away prematurely, which led to greater economic despair and in um, further limiting some opportunities to support our middle-aged and older populations. 